So let's have a look at this function now. y equals e to the 4x, total sine 4x. x appears twice. So I've got two separate functions involving x. I can't combine the two. I can't multiply out any brackets or anything like that to just get x's on their own. I've got two completely separate functions, an exponential function and a sine function, like we've been looking at already. So in themselves, they're very easy to differentiate. Here's a picture of the function. Um, if x equals 0, then the sine is 0. So actually, at 0, we've got e to the 0, which is just 1, over 0. I won't put that 0 in because it doesn't like it. And that tends to infinity. So it shoots off to infinity at that point, which is why it does that. But we know the sine function looks like this, doesn't it? So there are other times that it actually is zero. So it also shoots off to zero here as well. So we've got this function. I want to differentiate this function. And to do it, I need to use this thing called the quotient rule. And the quotient rule is used when I've got one function divided by another. Quotient is to do with quota to sharing things. It's to do with division. So if you've got one function divided by another, you apply the quotient rule. And here it is in mathematical symbolism. And in words, it says pretty well what to do, like the product rule. I take, I've got two functions, u and v. I let the top one be u and the bottom one be v. It's important that it's that way around. So the top function is u, the bottom function is v. In the product rule, it actually didn't matter which you call u and which you call v, but it does with the quotient rule. The denominator must be v. And so what this rule is saying is, I take the bottom function and multiply that by the differential of the top function. And then I subtract the top function multiplied by the differential of the bottom function. And then I divide the whole lot by v squared. You're not expected to remember it, v being the bottom function. You're not expected to remember it, you'll be given it in the exam, but you will be expected to be able to use it, possibly. And so, let's have a look at practice. Here it is in words. So let's apply it to this function. y equals e to the 4x over sine 4x. So we've got y equals e to the 4x over sine 4x. So we let u equal the top function and v equal the bottom function. So it's all going to be about applying the rule and then once you've applied the rule, use algebra to try and simplify it, to factorise if possible, because if later on you're expected to find turning points, then you know that's going to equal zero and anything you've taken outside the bracket will disappear. So it's a good idea to try and factorise. So that's what we're going to do now, apply the rule and then try and use algebra to simplify it. So, split the page, might be an idea again. So what if I call u? That's e to the 4x. What's the differential of that? Be careful you use don't look what y's. What's v equal to? And what's the differential of that? So I'll just pause while you just fill in those gaps. That's the easy part, the differentiation bit. So hopefully you've got 4 e to the 4x. You bring the 4 down and the rest stays the same. The number in front is just 1. So 4 times 1 is 4 e to the 4x. The next one, bring the 4 outside times by the number in front, which in this case is just 1. And the sign changes to a cosine and the rest stays the same. So we get that. Now I apply the rule. dy by dx. Always a good, good idea to write it down, because you've got it there to refer to then. And I, so I started to write the product rule. It's v du dx minus u dv dx over v squared. That's the rule we're going to apply. So as with the product rule, we just put the numbers in. What is v? 
it's sine 4x. What is the differential of u? It's 4e to the 4x. What's u? e to the 4x. What's dv by dx? 4 cos 4x. And what's v squared? It's sine 4x squared. So I just plug them in to this rule. So I give myself room to do it. So what's dy by dx? It's v sine 4x times uh, du dx, which is 4e to the 4x, minus u, e to the 4x, times dv dx, which is 4 cos 4x. All over v squared, which is sine 4x squared. So I just write down the v, what v is and square it. So now I'm going to simplify it a bit. I always put trigonometric functions at the end, so there's no confusion. Somebody might think that's the sine of 4x times 4e to the 4x. That's not what I mean. It's not the sine of all this. So put the 4e to the 4x at the front. And same here. I've put the 4 in front of the e to the 4x. <coughs> so what I'm going to have is 4e to the 4x times sine 4x minus 4e to the 4x cos 4x all over and the word on this there's the little convention we use for this sine 4x means the sine of 4x times the sine of 4x times by itself sine 4x squared but we have this little convention where we put the 2 here to mean the sine of 4x all squared. So I can write this as the sine of 4x squared like that. Put the little 2 there. So now we look at it and try and factorise. Hopefully you can see that the 4e to the 4x is common to both of the terms on top so that can come outside the bracket. So I can write dy by dx equals 4e to the 4x bracket and then what am I left with inside the bracket all over sine squared 4x so just put in what's inside that bracket hopefully you've got sine 4x minus cos 4x for our differential function now, if, and we're not going to do that for this particular example, if I was asked to find the turning point here, where the gradient drops to zero, in other words, and if we look back at our original function, where we can see it drops to zero around about the 0 0.2 mark, then I can find that by letting this equal zero. And actually, anything, I can multiply or divide by anything I like, so if I were to do that, Divide both sides by 4e to the 4x and that would go. Multiply both sides by sine squared 4x and that would go. So all I'd be left with is sine 4x minus cos 4x equals 0. And so then I could try and find out what, you know, the problem would be much easier. So the fact that this sometimes equals 0 to find a turning point is really handy if you factorised.